This man is going to cultivate potatoes on Mars. He starts by clearing out the living module and constructing a plastic greenhouse for insulation. Then, he transports soil from Mars and combines it with soil brought from Earth. Most importantly, he incorporates the excrement and waste left by his colleagues, which is probably quite odorous. He cuts the potatoes and carefully places them on a mixture of fertilizer using a small spoon. Then, he buries the potato slices as seedlings and adds a source of life to specific areas. With everything prepared, the next step is to generate more water. Utilizing his knowledge of high school chemistry, he ignites a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. He has several hundred liters of unused hydrazine, which can be separated into propellant and hydrogen. He organizes a seamless set of equipment and ignites it. He succeeds. Woo! Igniting hydrogen gas is very dangerous. Mark found the reason. He forgot to account for the excess oxygen he exhaled. Afterward, Mark put on his equipment and tried again. This time he succeeded for Rayal. When he woke up, the plastic shelter was covered in droplets of water. Why did he want to grow potatoes on Mars? Because he wanted to survive. Just a few days ago, they were on the Mars Asidia plane, working with colleagues. Suddenly, a level 24 storm was about to hit. The astronauts had to evacuate urgently. During the evacuation, communication equipment got blown away and hit Mark, causing his spacesuit to rupture. The news of his suit being breached reached the spaceship, and they knew Mark wouldn't survive for a minute. Commander Lewis still appeared to walk out of the spacecraft, searching for Mark. But in the end, the spacecraft lost balance, and Lewis had to return to the ship. They left Mars with heavy hearts. However, after the storm passed, Mark suddenly woke up. It turned out that an object from the communication equipment had penetrated his body, and the blood that flowed out coagulated and sealed the spacesuit. That's why Mark didn't die due to the suit breach. After returning to the spacecraft, Mark performed surgery on himself to remove the metallic object from his body. After completing everything, Mark took a deep breath. He checked the remaining supplies and realized that he had enough food for 400 days. However, the next mission to Mars by the space agency was scheduled for another four years. That's when he came up with the genius idea of growing potatoes on Mars. He aimed to cultivate enough food to sustain himself for three years. On the 54th Sol, Martian day, Mark was having breakfast when he made an astonishing discovery. He then carefully walked on the soil, covered by plastic sheeting. The potatoes he planted were sprouting. Meanwhile, back on Earth, a funeral was being held for Mark. He had become a hero, and the director of the space agency, Teddy, personally delivered a speech. This time, Vincent, the person in charge of the Mars mission, approached Teddy. He needed to use a satellite to remotely capture images of Base 3. However, Teddy refused, as this action would require public disclosure. He was concerned that releasing pictures of Mark's body would create a negative sentiment and fear toward space exploration, which could jeopardize the mission. After receiving funding, Vincent took matters into his own hands and instructed the Department of Aviation to investigate the coordinates of Base 3. To his surprise, they discovered significant changes between the 18th and 54th Sol. It was clear evidence of human activity at Base 3, indicating that Mark was still alive. Rather than feeling excitement, they pondered how to handle the public perception. Having just held a funeral for Mark, his sudden re-emergence created a challenging situation for the space agency. Teddy insisted that Mark's returning colleagues, who still had 10 months left to reach Earth, should not be informed. He hoped they would remain vigilant and undisturbed. Everyone knew that even if they could transport food to Mars, Mark was most likely dead from starvation. They understood that no matter how they attempted to rescue Mark, he had no hope of survival. Vincent couldn't help but think of the despair that Mark must be feeling. But Mark wasn't as difficult as they had imagined. He had just taken a hot shower while listening to music and was complaining that Commander Lewis' computer had only one song. You have to face what you have to face, Teddy announced publicly, saying, Are you going to resign? No! On the 70th Sol, Mark was making long-term plans. The space agency's next mission, four years later, would be at Base 4, which was 3,200 kilometers away from his current location. His goal was to reach there by then, but it wouldn't be easy. His rover had a maximum range of 35 kilometers on a full charge, so it would take 50 days to reach the designated point. Additionally, he needed to carry enough food to sustain him for 50 days. Mark had to experiment continuously. He had to scientifically chart a route. He decided to dismantle the batteries from rover 2, doubling his available power. However, he couldn't use the heater because it would waste half of the electricity. So, heating became a crucial issue. Smiling at the camera, Mark recorded his survival efforts on Mars. Regarding the heating problem, Mark excavated a dangerous object containing plutonium-238. If it ruptured near a person, it would be fatal. 
However, it could emit heat. At this point, the risk of cancerous radiation was no longer a concern for Mark. He started using the object for warmth, and he no longer felt cold while driving. He played the disco music that Commander Lewis had left behind, leaving only that one song. Mark's every move on Mars was observed from Earth. Each day, he drove Rover too farther. When asked by reporters, Vincent responded, he must be trying to reach Base 4 to establish communication with the space agency. Finally, Vincent assured everyone that they would do everything possible to bring Mark back alive. Media liaison and was furious, expressing her belief that Vincent should honestly inform the world that Mark might not survive, rather than giving false hope. Director Teddy was also angry with Vincent's response because they all knew that Mark's chances of survival were slim and declared that Vincent would no longer be allowed on television. Meanwhile, in the laboratory, they were working on using thrusters to transport food to base for on Mars. However, it would take nine months, including six months just for construction. The director demanded that Bruce complete the project in three months, stating that money was not an issue. Leaders often speak without considering the practical challenges involved. On the 79th Soul, Mark had a successful potato harvest, 